Hi everybody. After living in Denmark for five years, I've come to the conclusion that there are just some things that don't happen here in Denmark. And I'm about to tell you what those are. Stay tuned. Come along as my Danish husband and our two kids show this American what it means to live a life in Denmark. My new Danish life. Hi there and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kelly and I'm an American who lives in Denmark. And as I mentioned before, I've noticed some things that just don't happen here in Denmark. Maybe it's a little bit of culture shock. Maybe it's just some things that I have been told multiple times by Danish people that these are the things that they don't do. And it's not a culture shock. It's just telling you the facts. This is something they don't do in Denmark, so don't you do it. Okay. And I was able to come up with 10 of these different items. Some of these might seem like just a good old dose of common sense, but some of these other ones might surprise you. You be the judge. Before we get started with that though, if you have not subscribed to my channel, now is your big chance. I would really appreciate it if you came along. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for being here. You are the best. Now let's get to the good stuff. These are in no particular order. It's just some things that I've noticed, or as I've mentioned, have been told multiple times. And the list probably could go on and on and on. But these jump in my head right away when I think of, nope, you can't do that in Denmark. Compared to the US, compared to other countries I've been to, Denmark, big no. What are they? My number one. <laughs> you cannot casually enter a gathering unseen. Yeah, that's a really big number one. What does that mean? Well, when you go to like a party or something or a gathering, yeah, during Corona times, what's that? Think back to those pre-Corona times when you were actually able to mingle and socialize with other people and maybe even a big group of them. Well, one thing that you would do in Denmark, as soon as you walk in the room with wherever these people are, you would go and greet every single person with a handshake. I don't know if Corona's gonna change that and we're gonna start elbow bumping each other. That would be really interesting to see when we finally get out of lockdown. But if you are going into this party gathering situation, you go around and you shake hands with everybody. But if you come across somebody you don't know, that's your chance to introduce yourself and you just say your name and they say their name. Imagine being the person in the room where you know no one and you're constantly saying your name. Kelly, 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 Kelly. There's no possible way I'm ever gonna remember all of those people. But it's something that you just can't do in Denmark. You can't go into a party or a gathering and just kind of hide in a corner or, oh, I'm gonna enter this party but no one's going to see me. Parties in Denmark aren't kind of like what you see in these American high school movies, right? Where everybody is all over the place and it's crazy. Normally, if you've been invited to somebody's house in Denmark, you are all going to be in the same place. Maybe you're all at the same table kind of thing. You're all in the same room. You're all in a backyard somewhere. But that will be your job as the new person who has arrived to the party is to go around and introduce yourself or just to say hello. So if you're someone who's a bit timid, Eh, you can't be timid in Denmark. That just doesn't happen. Number two, you will not get arrested if your young children are left unattended. Now, I have to be a little bit more specific with this. In Denmark, at the age of 10, kids are no longer allowed to stay after school and be picked up by their parents. They have to find their own way home. So they might walk, ride their bike, or take the bus. And if they don't have anyone to go home to, because let's say it's two o'clock in the afternoon, normally they have a club to go to. But what I'm from in the US is if you leave a child who's under the age of 13 alone in the United States, you can be arrested as a parent because of neglect. <laughs> that doesn't happen in Denmark. Nope, that doesn't happen. Letting them stay in the house while you are going to the grocery store is not neglect. And as far as the Danes are concerned, and you're not gonna get into trouble with that. You're not gonna get into trouble if your kids are sitting in a car and you go into a store. I know in the US it can get really, really hot and it can be very dangerous to leave your children unattended in a car. And um, that's a different issue. We don't get heat like that in Denmark, but it's also kind of a safer 
place, if you ask me. I don't have to worry about the fact that my 10 year old is leaving school by, by himself at, at 10 years old and having to ride his bike home. I don't have to worry about the fact that he rides his bike in the morning. It takes him 20 minutes to get to school. You know, I don't know. I, I don't do it. I don't ride with him. I drive to another town. But I have seen children who are in kindergarten, as young as five years old, six years old, who are coming home by themselves. I don't know if this is something that's totally legal, but it's totally something that happens. <laughs> And so um, don't feel weird if you're a parent coming to Denmark and thinking to yourself, I have to be around my children all the time. I have to supervise them. I have to go with them to the playground. I know in the U.S. playgrounds can be areas where scary people hide out and you want your kids to be safe. Luckily, Denmark's not like that. So knock on wood at least, it's not like that now. So having to supervise your children 24-7 is just not something that happens in Denmark. They're a little bit more laid back. <laughs> Number three, you don't have to put on your best outfit, do your hair and makeup to go to the grocery store. In the US, it's very common for women to put on makeup and do their hair and look presentable when they're going to the store or to pick up their kids from school or really anywhere outside of their house. Because if they don't, people might think that there's something wrong. Well, not in Denmark. Denmark, most women don't even wear makeup or do their hair on a regular basis. It's not something that a lot of Danish women do. Some do, but that's something that I find to be very different with cultures, is that they don't care so much about their appearance, and other people don't care so much about other people's appearances. I don't have to worry about going out and working in my yard or going to the grocery store or anywhere else or to pick up my kids and, and feel that I'm being judged by other moms or by other people because I don't look a certain way. And I don't want to say they don't judge in Denmark. That's not on my list because they do judge. People get judged all the time in Denmark. But I wouldn't say that you get judged based on how you look. I don't have to have a certain hairstyle in order to feel accepted. I can be completely me whenever I leave my house and that's completely okay. So in Denmark, it just doesn't happen that someone is going to get dolled up to go to the grocery store. Number four, big one. You can't spank your kids in Denmark. Yeah, you know what? In the US, you can't really spank your kids either. Maybe when I was growing up, it was pretty common for parents to spank their kids. And in fact, it was common for the teachers and the principals to spank kids at school. I remember when I was five years old watching my teacher spank a kid in my class. And I thought, oh my gosh, if they can do it here, I better be good. Because, you know, I got spanked as a kid. I'm not traumatized for it. I knew I was doing something wrong. <laughs> And I was being punished for it. And I could kind of laugh about it now. I mean, it was never anything where I was being abused. And that's something that's very different. In the US, we have a very touchy culture where if you see any sports like American football, the coach is constantly patting the, the players on the butt to tell them they did a good job. <laughs> We're kind of used to getting smacked on the butt, I guess, in the USA. And parents, when I was a kid, my parents especially, they never abused us. It was kind of a spank because it was something that we needed to stop doing or whatever. I'm not justifying it. I don't spank my kids. I threaten a lot, but I don't actually spank my kids. And the thing is, is that like I tell you about this kind of butt tapping culture, we have something that's called a love tap. <laughs> I grew up knowing that a spank that, you know, doesn't hurt is called a love tap. You know, maybe it's like a baby you're holding and you could burp a baby, right? Patting a baby on the back is not abuse. That's the same thing as what we would do with the butt, right? We would pat them on the butt. And that's the same thing you would do with your kids a lot of time is a spank, but it's not anything that is abusive. And when I moved to Denmark, it was very much, 
you know, like drilled into the brains of my children in daycare and in school. I don't know what they thought they were getting at home, but they kept saying, you know, they kept coming home from school saying that, oh, parents are not allowed to spank kids in Denmark. You know, they're teaching them this. They're teaching them about their rights as a child, which I find to be quite interesting. But, you know, I never really thought anything of it so much because I don't actually spank my kids. But I really think it's interesting that they put so much pressure or they put so much emphasis on the fact that, you know, that they're teaching it to children so that children know that it's wrong. And I don't know if Danes think that people who, you know, grew, grew up being spanked, you know, they're envisioning somebody holding a metal rod and then beating the kids senselessly until they're passed out or black and blue or bloody. No, it's never like that. It was never like that for me. But I know for a fact that in the U.S. it's looked down upon if you spank your children. It's very much a different culture now than it was when I was a kid. But you know what? You can't do it in Denmark, so it doesn't really matter. Another long topic. My number five is that you cannot politely address a topic indirectly. <laughs> okay, what do I mean by that? Well, this is the kind of case like when you're from another culture, I, won't, I wouldn't say every culture, I would say a lot of English speaking cultures are like this, is that when we want to address a topic, a lot of times we will say a lot of nice things in order to get to where we want. It's almost like where we want to go is in the middle and we're kind of like doing this spiral thing until we get there. And it's very, it's very direct. So you can't just do a spiral until you get to your point. You have to go straight to your point in Denmark. And so if I want to tell someone, you know, that they're being very loud, instead of just saying, you're being very loud, you know, that's the Denmark right there. As an American, I might say, you know, um, I'm I'm trying to work here and I find it very distracting when I hear loud noises and you know, and it's like You can't do that in Denmark and especially if you don't actually ever get to your point and you assume that the other person will understand what you're saying That's not going to happen at all They will not get what you're saying here. You have to go straight to the point and if it's you're standing on my foot. That's what you need to say. Instead of, ow, oh, I have this really bad pain in my foot. Oh, I wonder what's going on. <laughs> Thinking that maybe somebody will look down at your foot and realize, hey, they're standing on it. No, they will not do that in Denmark. So you need to go straight to your point if you want a Dane to understand what you are trying to say. I'm gonna throw in my number six here because it's a short one. Some things that just don't happen in Denmark, you don't get ice in your drinks. So if I were to go somewhere and ask for a Danish water, for example, I would be given a bottle probably of sparkling water. I would not be given tap water and I would not be given ice in my drinks. So that's something that just does not happen here. I think if you're used to getting cold drinks like that to the point where there's ice inside, then it's kind of a culture shock. I know that's a big thing in the U.S. I wouldn't say that I was always big into ice in my drinks when I lived over there, but when it's a really warm day, I really appreciate a very nice ice cold drink. But that's just not something that usually happens here in Denmark. Sometimes in a fast food restaurant, eh, it might be a little different, but for the most part, you're not gonna get ice in your drinks. My number seven is kind of funny. <laughs> You do not get alone time at work. And normally on Friday, they have something called Friday bread and everybody participates. It, it just doesn't happen for somebody to say, oh no, I'm gonna sit this one out. I'm not gonna be social. If there's something going on at work, everybody is involved. And if there's a Friday bread, everybody is involved. You'll take turns with bringing in the stuff for the bread, like the jam or the butter or the meat or whatever it is that you wanna put on it. Maybe you have candy on the table, other things. Everybody takes turns bringing that kind of stuff in. And you don't get a get out of jail free card. That doesn't happen. So if I'm just like, uh -huh, I just don't wanna be social or uh, I'm not gonna participate in, in Friday bread. When it is a, a communal event, when you have people getting together at your work, it is very accepted that everybody does it together. So being alone during your breaks and having your alone time 
is not very Danish, as well as not being a part of these social events. It is almost expected that you be there. And you're looked at kind of oddly if you don't. My numbers eight and nine also kind of go together. Something that never happens in Denmark is that you don't lose your job because you called in sick. That just doesn't happen. It actually makes no sense to people in Denmark. If you're somebody who's lying and you call in for like an entire month or people know that you're not sick or something, that is different. But if you are legitimately sick and you want to stay home and get better, that's common here. So when you're saying, oh, well, I, I feel sick today, but I have to go in. That doesn't happen in Denmark. That That's not part of the, the Danish program. If you're sick, they want you to stay home. That's just all there is to it. If your child is sick, they want your child to stay home from school. And if you have to stay home with your sick child, that's just how it is. And I cannot believe it because I actually, as an American, I got docked, which means I was graded lower on my evaluation at work because I took too many days off of work. And sometimes these evaluations could mean the difference between getting raises and things. That wasn't the case for me. For me, it was just, I wanted the best score on my evaluation and I didn't get it. So it really was just kind of an ego crush for me. A lot of other jobs in the United States, if you call in sick or you call in sick because you have a sick child, you can actually lose your job. They would rather you go to work sick than miss a day of work. It's quite unbelievable and I think it's horrible. And the reason why I missed so many days of work was because I had a baby. And I explained that to them, but they said that that wasn't good enough. Crazy! But you know, why is it that Americans then go to work and they might be thinking as a Dane, well, that job's not very good then. It, why would I want to work there? Number nine, if you lose your job, most of the times you lose your insurance. That doesn't happen in Denmark. Because in Denmark, we have this universal health care. That means that everybody gets health care. It doesn't matter if you have a job or not, you still have health care. Most jobs will tell you to do whatever it is that your doctor tells you to do. But there are some, and I know there are some, because I know people who've been in these situations where they've had to go back to work before they were well, because if they didn't, they'd lose their job. And if they lost their job, they lost their health insurance. And you could get another job, sure, but there's never a guarantee that you will have health insurance with that job or that you will have good enough health insurance to take care of you. And it just blows my mind sometimes that people live that way, but that does not happen in Denmark. And a last one, it's a big one. There are so many people in the United States who never get to go to college because they can't afford it. That does not happen in Denmark. Not only is there no cost for university in Denmark, students also get paid money to go because the government feels that they need money to live off of. Yeah, it's not a whole lot to live off of, but it's something. People I know complain here about the fact that what they get, this SU, is so small, but I have to say, <laughs> they have no idea what it's like to live in a country where you have to pay thousands of dollars just for one class, and then you end up having to take out bank loans in order to do that. Then you have to spend hundreds of dollars just on books, and again, that goes in your bank loan. And then you end up having to pay these bank loans off well into your 30s. It's crazy. But that doesn't happen in Denmark. We pay a high amount of taxes here, so that way the health care is taken care of, so that way the education is taken care of. I'm in my 40s and I pay taxes. I pay taxes for my kids to one day go to university, for me to go to university, for me to have knee surgery where I'm not spending thousands of dollars on it. I don't have to worry about having enough money saved for when my children are old enough to go to university because I know that as Danish citizens, they will be able to go to university for free. I say it's for free be because 
and they don't have to pay for it. Like how I had to pay for my university education in the United States. I know that the money that is being used to fund their education has been taken out of my taxes all the years that I'm living here. But I'm willing to pay that because it's giving my children opportunities. I don't have to worry about saving money for the if and when chance that I get sick or saving money for the because I have no idea what it's going to cost by the time my kids go to university. That doesn't happen in Denmark. And it makes me feel so grateful to live in Denmark because of these things. I'm happy to pay my taxes if that means that I don't have to worry about other things. Thanks, Denmark, for that. What do you think about this list of 10? Which is your favorite thing that does not happen in Denmark? And do you have any others that you'd like to add in the comment section? Go ahead and write those down below. Thanks for coming along on this video, and I hope that you had a nice time. I'm going to have a nice time with my bubble water, my sparkling water, and I will see you again very soon. Take care!